Take it off. <laughs> All right, I'm back in Roslyn. You happy? Yeah. Yeah. Right. You better support us because we're going to try to bring a lot of young acts. Remember when the police came? There was only 20 people in the audience. So come on, let's think about it. Have a great time tonight. Anything that's sold out that you wanted to see, we're rebooking it, okay? And I think even David's going to stay here as a resident. Try to do it three times, four times here. We're going to keep rolling. Can you guys lower the lights a little? Oh, but I guess it's okay. Anyway, <laughs> gentlemen you know from WLIR, WDRE, from Sirius Radio, needs no introduction. Big hand for Larry the Duck. Yeah! Dad. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I've been waiting 32 years to say this. Good evening and welcome to my father's place. Yeah! I want to talk about Epi in a second, but before that, I just have a little housekeeping because there's a lot of people to thank that got us to this place tonight, so don't mind me. 2,000 emails a day just burn out my eyes, so I have to read it this way and then I'll put the, uh, the glasses down. First off, we want to thank Mark Peters, Larry Ross, who I've met with his lovely wife before, Richard Solomon, Bill Couts, David Eng. They believed in this dream that Epi had many, many years ago to follow through with the vision. Also, we want to thank the owners here at the Rosalind Hotel, Sumir, Kukar, Siddhar, Sumir, Kukar, and their team as well. They embraced the idea of my father's place years ago, and they made it happen here in this very hotel. Can we have a hand for them, for the owners? Yeah. They're also full partners in what Epi is doing here. We're also thanking the Bridgestone Group and their staff and workers who have been working very hard to get this club ready too. Also, we're fortunate to have Chef Tomo Kababashi. He's our executive chef. In a few weeks, we're gonna have a full restaurant here so you can come have Chef Tomo's food and sushi as well. Last but not least, I wanna thank all of you for being here tonight too. You know, the vision started with Epi. The partnership was with 92.7 WIR, which to me was the greatest yeah. radio station yeah. ever yeah. existed. I do also wanna thank my good friend, Dan Kelligan. Dan was at Westbury Music Fair for 33 years. He is the general manager here, and he also went to St. John's University with me, so yeah. I'm happy Oh, I do want to thank a very special musical friend, Glenn Gamboa from Newsday, who's the music critic, has been supporting everything you've seen editorially in Newsday about my father's place and the photos. I want to thank Debbie Henley, who's the editor-in-chief of Newsday, and Debbie Krennic, who's the publisher. It really means a lot to us. I've worked with them for many years, and they're really good people. And this is all about Long Island, and this is all about you. Amen. The partnership with WLIR was very unique and very special, and I mentioned St. John's because what I've never told Epi was when I went to St. John's in 75, I was going to my father's place, and I didn't know Epi. And I started my college radio career there in 1978, in January 78, I walked in the door, at WIR, Dennis McNamara embraced me and I went on the air for the first time as the youngest DJ in 1979. But in 1978, 1979, in my last two years at St. John's, I was the concert chairman. And Alumni Hall holds 6,250 people, 6, people, which is 150 people more than Radio City Music Hall. And we had great concerts. I learned about contracts and riders, but I watched Epi because he was kind of mentoring me and he didn't know it. And what he did as a promoter could never be duplicated. The riders, the egos, the agents, the managers, the record labels, my God. He had to deal with all that bullshit and still put on this stage what you're gonna enjoy tonight. So Epi, I wanna thank you for all of that. And I want you to know that the boy, in the words of you too, the boy became a man. And I grew up in my father's place. And God knows, I've watched Epi, like you mentioned the police, I stood next to Epi as he stole Sting on the first tour. He said, if you keep singing Roxanne like that, you're gonna blow out your throat. <laughs> Swear to God. And the first time I met Epi, John Rieger, and have you seen the movie? New Wave Dare to Be Different on Showtime and Showtime on that? <laughs> Epi's in the movie. Epi is in the Long Island Music Hall of Fame, and he deserves it, and so does my father's place. 
When I met with you for the first time, the original owner of LIR before Elton Spitzer was a guy named John Rieger, and you're going to remember this, Epi, but this is the first time I met Epi. So John would do a 4th of July barbecue with lobsters and stuff, and he'd bring the staff to his house in Bayshore. I'm sitting at a table with Epi, I meet him for the first time, I swear to God, I have half a lobster, and as he's reaching over, he says, you're not going to finish that, are you? And he ate my lobster. It's a true story. But when you think about the history, I'm going to be serious, of my father's place, if music was a religion, that was a cathedral. If you think about, from NRBQ to New Riders on the Purple Sage, right? From David Johansson to David Byrne and Talking Heads, the Ramones, Blondie played there. Think about Billy Joel and Bruce Springsteen, who were nobody, and he took them in. And notice he didn't have the cover bands. He never had the cover bands, from Barnaby Vi to the Good Rats. You think about all that talent that was on that stage, and the Tuesday night radio concerts that we had every Tuesday night live on LIR, and the listeners won the tickets, we had Squeeze on the Argy Bargy Tour. We had so many bands, when I think back, it's just too numerous to mention. But that's all because of that man, Michael Epi Epstein. So Epi, thank you from the bottom of our heart for everything that you have done for Long Island. And the one thing I will say is doing a daily radio show on Sirius XM is very special to me. I, I just celebrated my 15th anniversary, so I've now matched my LIR and DRE years with my Sirius XM idea, ideas. And I talk about Long Island every day. I'm the only person from New York on my channel. Everyone's from K-Rock in Los Angeles. And I'm very proud of being a Long Islander. And one little fact you should know, which I learned a few years ago, in 1948, President Truman had a commission of five people that had to make a recommendation to Congress on who would be the 49th state of the United States. And they had three choices, Hawaii, Alaska, and Long Island. And of the five, Long Island got two votes. We lost by one freaking vote. 51st state. 51st state. Yeah, 51st, 51st state. 51st state. state. That's going to be the future governor of New York State in Long Island. Yeah. <laughs> The capital will be in Melville. No, yeah. Roslyn. <laughs> all right, so here. Oh, all right, here you go. Let's we'll take a break. Yeah, so I'm going to take a little break. Beer break. Yeah. Oh, by the way, drinks are on Epi. I always wanted to do that. Michael Epi H. Steen, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. All right, give me a couple of minutes. And by the way, I'm hanging out. I'm, I'm going to go table to table and just sit with you and drink your beers. And also, my wife, Suzanne the Duck, is here tonight. We just celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary. For, for regular people, that's very difficult. But she's been, we met at WDRE. She was the promotions director, and she's been my rock. And thank you, Suzanne. Yo te amo, Suzanita. She's cute. I'll be right back. <laughs> 